the Fundamental Manufacturing Processes video series, examining the tools and techniques of precision booking. This program explores turning and lathe bases. Turning on the lathe is one of the most common metal cutting operations. In turning, a workpiece rotates about its axis on the lathe. Single point cutting tools are fed into the workpiece, shearing off unwanted material to create the desired size and cylindrical axially symmetric shape. Operations are also performed on the exposed end and internal surfaces. Workpiece material is removed in the form of chips. Continuous chips are formed when the cutting tool is in continuous contact with the part, especially when cutting ductile materials such as soft steels or aluminum. A discontinuous chip is formed even in a continuous operation like turning when the material is not ductile enough to deform continuously. It fractures ahead of the cutting tool. Discontinuous chips are formed when machining brittle materials like cast iron. The lathe is one of the most versatile machine tools, capable of many diverse operations. It is adaptable to many shapes and materials. Because of this flexibility, cutting conditions and requirements of specific operations vary extensively. Parts made by turning range widely in size, from small watch components to automotive parts to huge shafts that drive propellers. The two important measures of the size or work capacity of a lathe are the maximum diameter work the lathe can turn, called the swing, and the maximum length of work the lathe can hold, called the distance between centers. Turning may be an intermediate process in making a part rather than a final process. For example, turning gear blanks before the gear teeth are cut or machining a part that will later be ground to an accuracy greater than can be achieved through turning alone. The basic turning machine tool is the general purpose engine lathe. It is often the first machine tool a machinist learns to operate. Although no longer used for production of more than a few parts, it illustrates the principles of turning. Basic requirements for lathe work are a means for holding and rotating work pieces and a means for holding and moving cutting tools. The workpiece, typically round but not necessarily so, is gripped in the lathe at one or both ends and rotated. Cutting tools of various shapes are slowly brought to the rotating workpiece and fed into the stock to accomplish material removal. Rotation is provided by the spindle mounted in the headstock. The spindle is driven by a motor and gear train to achieve the desired speed. The speed and feed selector levers are on the headstock. Work is held at both ends between centers which are pointed conical pins or held at one end by a chuck, a collet, or if an unusual shape, by a fixture. Chucks fit on the spindle nose of the lathe and hold short, large diameter work. There are many types of chucks, and they are either manually or power operated. Three jaw universal chucks are the most common. All three jaws move in tandem to grab a round workpiece, center it, and grip it. Irregularly shaped workpieces may be held in four jaw chucks in which the jaws adjust independently. Collets, which usually seat in the spindle of the lathe, are hollow cylindrical devices with slots along most of their length. A collet opens under its own spring tension and is closed securely to grip the stock. They hold small diameter round work on center. Chucks and collets come in many types to suit various workpieces. Longer parts, such as shafts, may require what is called between center turning. This style of cutting supports the part at both ends and requires conical center holes be drilled in the workpiece ends prior to the operation. The end of the workpiece adjacent to the tailstock is supported by a center mounted in the tailstock. 
The opposite end can be gripped by a chuck or collet, or supported by a center mounted in the headstock spindle. Headstock centers always rotate with the lathe spindles and the workpieces. Tailstock centers may be the live type, where they rotate with the workpiece, or the dead type that stays stationary. If the work is long and requires more support to resist the cutting forces, steady rests may be used to minimize deflection away from the cutting tool. Cutting tools brought to the rotating work may move in one or more directions. The basic tool movements on an engine lathe are accomplished with the carriage, cross slide, and compound rest. The carriage and apron assembly on an engine lathe travels along the bedways parallel to the workpiece axis. This is known as the Z axis. Motion perpendicular to the workpiece and lathe axis is called the X axis and on an engine lathe this is provided by the cross slide which sits atop the carriage. Atop the cross slide is the compound rest which can be rotated to any angle and secured. It provides movement at an angle to the workpiece axis and carries the tool post where tools are mounted. Other tools may be mounted in the tailstock for end working operations. External turning is a relatively uncomplicated metal cutting procedure. It can be broken down into a number of basic cuts and operations. In straight turning, the tool is fed parallel to the axis of the work to reduce its diameter so that the final diameter is the same at each end. Removing a lot of material in one pass is called rough turning. The final lighter cut to create a smooth surface finish is called finish turning. Taper turning produces a taper along the axis of the workpiece. Tapers can be produced by offsetting the tailstock from center line or by using a taper attachment. Short, steep tapers can be turned using the compound rest. Contour turning or profiling, formerly done by having a single point cutting tool trace a shape cut into a template, has largely been replaced by numerically controlled or NC turning in which the desired contour is programmed into the machine control. Forming is an alternative to generate complicated shapes. The desired form or geometry is first ground into a cutting tool and then advanced perpendicular to the axis of the work to reproduce the tool shape on the work. Eliminating sharp corners from a workpiece is considered a good safety measure. Chamfering breaks these corners, most often at a 45 degree angle. Grooving creates a groove or recess by feeding a tool, usually the final groove size and shape perpendicular to the axis of the work. Some grooving tools are capable of also cutting on their sides and can widen the groove by traversing side to side after plunging into the workpiece. Thread chasing makes repeatedly deeper cuts in the same helical groove using a tool with the desired thread form. To create a thread with 12 threads per inch, for example, the lathe carriage moves one inch while the spindle rotates 12 times. The lead screw, along with the quick change gearbox, permits threading operations by precision control of feeds and speeds of the cutting tool. Facing squares up the end of a workpiece. It also finishes the work or a single diameter to the desired length. Hole making operations on a lathe are usually performed working from the end of the part. On a lathe, this is most commonly provided by advancing a non-rotating drill into the end of a rotating workpiece. Cross holes and angled holes are produced by holding the workpiece in a fixed position and advancing a rotating drill into the work. In some cases, both work and drill rotate. Since drilling produces a fairly rough hole surface with limited dimensional accuracy, it may be followed by a hole finishing operation. Reaming enlarges and finishes a previously drilled hole by removing a small amount of material with a rotating fluted tool of the desired hole diameter. Boring enlarges and finishes a hole with a single point cutting tool, like a turning tool. 
The boring bar moves along the axis of the part, as in turning, but inside the drilled hole. Tapping cuts threads inside a previously drilled hole with a tap by combining rotary and axial motion. Parting off or cutting off is like grooving, but with the narrow tool advancing to center, causing the finished part to fall off. Picking off is grabbing the part before it is cut off, and once cut off is complete, transferring the piece to another location, possibly a second spindle. Chips produced by turning may be long and awkward to handle. It is important to select tools that break chips before they get too long. Small chips are easily controlled and collected. Long stringy chips can snarl and cause workpiece damage, among other problems. Cutting fluid is used to cool the work and cutting tool, flush away chips, and lubricate the point where tool and chip meet. An exception is cast iron parts, which are usually cut dry. Turning productively depends on selecting the right machine for the job. For low to medium volume and for average sized parts, there are many choices. Today, the engine lathe is used largely for single, prototype, and low quantity parts rather than high volume production. Its cousin, the electronic engine lathe, combines manual and numerically lathe, but can also operate semi-automatically or fully automatically via electronic control. NC lathes offer greater productivity and flexibility for production runs. They are today's major type of production lathe and come in many designs. Numerical control allows the lathe to perform multiple cutting operations with ease. Rotating the handle of a manual lathe moves the tool in only one direction, but to machine along an oblique line or arc, two handles must be moved simultaneously in perfect synchronization. Even for a skilled machinist, this is a difficult procedure. Numerically controlled lathes easily perform these operations. Tapers, arcs, contours, or other machine motion can be defined mathematically and then stored as a tool path in computer memory. The programmed path combines machine slide motions, carrying the cutting tools into the work. Both linear and rotary motions can be combined precisely this way. Computer numerical control, or CNC lathes, can run through one or more part programs completely unattended, allowing the machinist to perform other tasks. Workpieces produced by CNC programs will be accurate and identical, except for process variations such as tool wear and material inconsistencies. The two-axis single turret CNC lathe is the simplest CNC turning machine. All tools are in a single turret, which is on a slide moving in two directions. Hence, it is designated a two-axis lathe. One cutting operation is performed at a time. The two-turret, four-axis CNC lathe allows tools from separate turrets, each on its own slide, to cut simultaneously. This reduces cycle time. Turn mill NC turning machines add milling operations to the machine's capability. For milling operations, the workpiece is held fixed or else rotated at a very slow speed while rotating tools, sometimes called live tools, are brought to it. The main benefit of the turn mill lathe is that more complex workpieces can be finished on the lathe and not have to be moved to a second machine tool for additional operations. The sub-spindle CNC lathe uses a secondary or sub-spindle to pick up the work from the main spindle. Another workpiece is then fed to the first spindle, running both spindles at the same time. The twin opposed spindle machine is similar to the subspindle lathe, except that both spindles are of equal power. Subspindle and opposed spindle type lathes typically complete a workpiece on both ends, eliminating secondary operations. Automatic screw machines are for high production turning and operate unattended. Cuts on the end of the work are combined with cuts from the side for rapid production. There are single spindle and multi-spindle types. The multi-spindle automatic is the premier high production turning machine. 
It can machine multiple parts simultaneously with multiple spindles. The six or eight spindles are held in a rotating spindle drum. This drum rotates the spindles to the cutting tools positioned on slides. The CNC Swiss type automatic is primarily for parts that are long and thin. To generate external features, the bar stock is fed longitudinally by a sliding headstock through a bushing past the radially arranged turning tools. Long, thin parts can be turned without deflection, as all turning is done adjacent to the bushing, which supports the rotating bar. Vertical turret lathes, or VTLs, are commonly used for large diameter round parts, not suitable for holding in the chuck of a horizontal lathe. The work is clamped on a rotating table two to six feet in diameter. Tools in tool blocks or turrets may be fed from above or from the side into the rotating work. Raw work stock is loaded into lathes in a variety of ways. Bar stock is typically loaded by an automatic bar loader through the spindle bore and into the chuck or collet. Bar loaders may carry a single bar or multiple bars for high production operations. Short lengths of raw material called slugs are hand loaded or automatically loaded to a chuck. Stock for long parts like shafts is loaded to the chuck plus tailstock center or between centers. Castings and forgings are not symmetrical shapes and often require specially designed chucks. Gantry handling systems are used to automatically load and transfer workpieces within a lathe or to another location. Tool arrangements on production lathes bring tools to the workpiece. Turrets, by far the most common tool holding arrangement on production lathes, can hold from 6 to 14 tools and quickly rotate on command to bring the next tool into position. Turrets accept tool holders, which in turn carry the cutting tools. Gang tooling holds from 4 to 10 tools on a slide and is common on compact lathes. How well a metal removal operation is performed depends in part on selection of the right operating parameters. On a lathe, the key operating parameters are cutting speed, feed rate, and depth of cut. Cutting speed is the rate at which the surface of the work moves past the cutting tool. It is measured in surface feet or meters per minute. It is the speed of spindle rotation in revolutions per minute times workpiece circumference. The speed changes as the tool plunges into the part. Feed rate is the speed at which the tool advances into the part longitudinally. It is measured in inches or millimeters per revolution. Feed rate influences chip thickness and how the chip breaks. The machine, tool, part strength and finish required on the final surface influence the feed rate chosen. Finish cuts require much slower feed rates than roughing cuts. Depth of cut is the thickness of the material removed from the work surface. When turning cylindrical work, the diameter is reduced by twice the depth of cut. So if the tool is advanced for a quarter of an inch depth of cut, the diameter will be reduced by one half of an inch. Many other factors influence these process variables. The machinability of the work material, the material and geometry of the cutting tool, the angle at which the cutting tool enters the work, the type of operation, and the horsepower and condition of the lathe. These should all be taken into account when selecting turning speeds and feeds. Let's re-examine the material contained in this videotape. Turning on a lathe generates round, symmetrical forms in a large variety of sizes by feeding cutting tools into the rotating workpiece, removing the desired amount of material in the form of chips. The basic parts of the engine lathe are the headstock with its feed and speed selector levers, spindle, chuck, collet or another work holding device, bed and bedways, 
carriage with cross slide, compound rest, tool post, apron and carriage controls, lead screw, and tailstock. The basic operations in turning include straight turning, taper turning, contour turning, forming, chamfering, grooving, thread chasing, facing, drilling, reaming, boring, tapping, and parting off. Lathe types in common use include manual and electronic engine lathes, two and four axis CNC lathes, sub-spindle and twin spindle type CNC lathes, vertical lathes, and single and multi-spindle automatic lathes. Work holding arrangements on lathes include three and four jaw chucks, collets, and between centers. Tool arrangements on production lathes include one or more turrets and gang tools. And the process variables in turning are cutting speed, which is the rate the surface of the work moves past the cutting tool. Feed rate, which is the speed the tool advances into the part longitudinally. And depth of cut, which is the thickness of material removed from the work surface.